To say I've had a long history with Laserdisc video games would be a huge understatement. As a diehard Don Bluth fan as well, I've collected numerous versions and memorabilia of Dragon's Lair and Space Ace, even interviewed the big man himself a couple of times. Needless to say, when New Wave Toys released the Replicade Dragon's Lair 1 6th scale replica, owning it was a must. Now, after a very long wait, Space Ace is here. I'm Shane Armandro. Let's take a look at this new arcade authentic mini cabinet together. Stick around. So let's get this baby open here. Uh, these guys are total class acts at New Wave. Uh, the Replicade stuff is always amazing. It comes in its own special delivery box like you would have gotten the arcade cabinet from the distributor. So you actually have this box inside the box. And then inside this box is yet another box. So you get a lot of boxes with this thing, but you can understand why you would want to have like a commemorative shipping box and the official Replicade box. And uh, these things are always just so great to open. I've got several of these things now and I never get tired of opening them. I never get tired of owning these things. They are just a class act. I mean, look at the box art. Look at the level of uh, detail and integrity these guys use. Inside here, we have a, a bag of goodies. We'll look at those in a minute. We've got a charging cable. We've got some replacement ball tops. And of course, we have the unit itself, which is, um, you know, listen, you can't wait to get the plastic off of these things. It is just gorgeous. Perfect attention to detail. Everything is fantastic. You've got all the buttons. You've got the three difficulty level selectors. On the back here, we have HDMI, USB, power, volume, power rocker. We're gonna go ahead and plug it in and charge it up. Get the, uh, get the power juice going to this guy. Ah, peel off that fantastic plastic. And we are ready to give this guy a look-see. I mean, it's beautiful. The side art's beautiful. It's got the speakers in the back. Uh, every, all attention to detail. Everything in here is absolutely premium. Now, these are the little ball replacements. You could actually put like a black topper on the controller if you wanted to. And there's some other colors as well. Inside this little baggie, of course, we have uh, the miniature laser disc itself, which is always cool. Looks like a little miniature replica. We have tokens, little fake tokens, a Daphne sticker. And of course, we have the user manual, if you need it, right? You can pretty much figure everything out on your own. And we have this very special little uh, place card, a uh, replica of the poster. So very, very cool. Um, we'll go ahead and power it up here and see what we've got going on. And it's not a flip switch, it's a rocker. It's a momentary switch this time, which I thought was kind of different. And we get the replicate boot up screens, the, uh, of course, all the copyright stuff. And there we have it. Look at that. In the flesh. Unbelievable. It, uh, of course, you know, playing on these little tiny controls is always, <laughs> it's always a little challenge, but they're big enough where you can play with them. But, uh, you know, you'll probably plug in a controller or something like that. And we'll get to some more gameplay later on. I just wanted you to see the beauty of this thing uh, after I open it. It is a, a great piece of work here. It's using the F2 ROM set, which is the one most commonly found in the arcade. Um, there is no home version. There's no way to make it play by itself. There's no alternate ROM set. It is just the arcade. And we'll go through the uh, options here in just a minute, but it is a work of art. All right, it's time for some off-screen play. I've actually got a USB controller hooked up. We're gonna talk a little bit more about compatibility with that in a minute. But here's the opening scene from Space Ace. Now, for those of you who may not be knowledgeable on how these laser disc games work, you're not actually controlling a character. Essentially, you're making moves to keep the movie playing. And you can see these little flashes of light. I'm tapping the controller or the joystick towards those lights. If you fail to move in the correct direction or you fail to push the fire button or you fail to do something at the right time, then you die. Now, 
you would probably know these as quick time events. There's a lot of video games that have quick time event sequences now. That's pretty much what this game is. It's a cartoon that is nothing more than quick time events. And it was, this was really popular, folks. I mean, Dragon's Lair more so than Space Ace, but I always had a soft spot in my heart for Space Ace. So as you can see, everything looks and plays. Alternate scenes seem to be there. Failure to energize scenes like you just saw. It seems to be there, but we'll talk more about compatibility in the wrap up. All right, now it's time to look at the direct feed HDMI version. And this is captured on an Elgato 1080p capture card. Um, and this is going to be upscaled to 4K for the video itself. But I assure you, it's pretty much representative of what you're seeing. All of the new assets, like these title screens and everything, look great. But what we're really concerned with is what sort of video quality we'll see at 1080p. And if we look at the intro here, we can tell that this is not upscaled, it is not post-processed, and in fact, it is very likely, in fact, I'm almost sure, that it is the original Laserdisc dump that's been going around since the beginning of time. If you look in the bottom left-hand corner periodically, you will see like a dirt line from the Laserdisc. And this is on all of the early copies of Daphne that have been floating around, almost all the emulated versions that use this particular Laserdisc dump all have the exact same little line in there. So that's how you can tell if you're working with a Laserdisc dump or not. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Listen, we want authenticity. We want this thing to look and play exactly like the arcade game. So now we have the menu, standard stuff that you would hope to see, screen brightness for the unit itself, whether you want the game audio to go to HDMI or the Replicade, if you want to track mode audio on, how many lives you'd like to have, three, five, or unlimited, the marquee, the lit marquee on the cab, on or off, and screen blanking. Like when the laser went to seek, it would blank the screen. If you're looking for authenticity, then you'll want screen blanking turned on. Now I think we're ready to actually take a stab at playing this game. And again, I'd like you to keep an eye on the lower left corner of the video as we play. You see that? You see that line that's going through there? That's definitely indicative of the original laser disc rips that we've been seeing forever. But this, but listen, this is authentic and it looks great on the little screen, but you may be disappointed if you were hoping to see something a little bit better for the 1080p output. All right, so let's talk about the controllers. Now we know on the back side of the Space Ace unit, you can plug in two USBs for player one and player two. And that seems like anything that you would have laying around the house should probably do the trick. So I actually did the video earlier with this remote, um, with this dongle, 2.4 gigahertz. And while it did more or less work, um, every time I would hit A to fire, it would also insert a credit. So every second time that you push the button, it would go bink, like bink, you're putting in another coin, bink, 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 bink. So this, while it did more or less work, it didn't work as well as I'd hoped. So I had other ones laying around the house, right? So I had this Stadia controller that's been converted to a standard Bluetooth, and I plugged it in using uh, USB-C. And it also kind of worked, but not really. The one that worked fairly well, oddly enough, was my Elite One controller. That one actually worked Okay, I don't even have an Xbox controller laying around anymore. I should have plugged in a Nintendo Switch one. Oddly enough, and no surprise, this little Street Fighter controller that I got from New Wave, uh, New Wave Toys, of course, it's one of theirs, you would expect it to work, right? If I plugged that in, let's see if I can remember which one was which. One of these coined up. Oh, that this one activates here, uh, activates the right coin thing for the menu. I thought one of these did a coin up. I guess the only thing it doesn't do is coin up. I think this one started one player and then one of these selected cadet. Yeah. And then this button, if I remember right, works as fire. I'm gonna find out in a minute. Oh, 
Oh, that's the credit button. One of the, oh, this was it. I gotta die. It's fine. Yeah, so this one, so in this case, this one actually worked as the uh, fire button. This one, this one does the coin up. This did a start. And then I think this selected cadet. Anyway, oddly enough, <laughs> this little guy, which by the way, they, they close these things out all the time. Um, I got these for like eight bucks a piece or something. I ended up getting two of them. So if, uh, if you have the urge to have something external like this to play a game, such as a new wave replicate, this is a nice little controller to have and it has enough buttons to get the job done. After the mishaps of the Missile Command mini cabinet, I'm very pleased to find the Replicate line back on track. Not only is this pristine in detail from a visual side, from the emulation side, it's clear they did it right, and believe me, I would know. After helping out Digital Leisure and even Nintendo DS developers with their ports of these classic Laserdisc games, I know what I'm seeing simulation versus emulation. Like Dragon's Lair, this is the real McCoy, right down to the scoring. Some of you will be disappointed that there is no alternative mode or ROM sets. Others may be displeased that there is no move guide or watch mode. But if what you want is an authentic arcade experience that you will remember move for move, this is for you. Well, folks, that's going to wrap it up here. If you like what you see, thumbs up, subscribe, and energize that bell. If you didn't see what you were looking for, leave me a comment. I try to read and respond to all of them. I'm Shane Armonroe. Thanks so much for watching and take care.